Hello, fourth graders. My name is Ms. Habzala, and I teach at Lawton Elementary in Seattle. I am so pleased to be here today and happy that I get to do some making meaning lessons with you. Um, today, we're going to focus on summarizing and determining some important ideas within a text. But before we do that, I would like to show you a few pictures of me, and this is my husband um, and our dog, Bubs. And this is who I hang out with these days. I have a little picture in the corner of Lawton Elementary where I teach. I definitely miss being there. I was um, at one point jealous of people that could work from home and now all I wanna do ever is go back to work. And so I hope you guys are all doing well and I know your teachers miss you. I think we're all just um, hoping we could be back together sometime. This is what my classroom used to look like. And this is what my home classroom looks like now. Our lesson for today and the work we'll be doing will be around determining important ideas and summarizing. Materials you will need are a this, the district packet or a piece of paper, I'll do fine, a pen or a pencil, and a turn and talk partner. Your turn and talk partner can be anyone in your family who is available to work with you, a friend if you have one close by, um, or if you're hanging out with a friend virtually, it could be your pet, it could be a pretend friend, it could be a pretend conversation you have with one of your favorite celebrities, it could be a pretend conversation you have with your teacher. Um, whatever language that you feel comfortable with is the language that you can turn and talk with a partner. We've learned a lot about a lot of different strategies that help us comprehend our text that we're reading, and summarizing is one of those important strategies. It helps to make sure that we understand the text that we have read and that we can communicate to others that we understand what we have read as well. Earlier this year, you might have heard the story, The Bat Boy and His Violin and Teammates. These are two stories that are set in the U.S. during the first half of the 20th century, which means the first half of 19, the 1900s. You learned about segregation and laws in the South that discriminated against black people, so laws that separated and treated black people unfairly. Some of the laws required black people to ride at the back of public buses and to give up their seats for white passengers. Rosa Parks believed that the segregation laws were unfair and that she, along with other civil rights activists, worked to change them. We're going to read a picture book of Rosa Parks by David A. Adler illustrated by Robert Casilla. It's a biography written by David Adler, who also wrote a picture book of Amelia Earhart, if you have been following along these lessons. This is what you would call a secondhand account, not written by Rosa Parks herself, but written by someone who was not there. Later on a couple of lessons, we will read a firsthand account that was written by Rosa Parks herself. Take a moment now to answer the question, what do you think you know about Rosa Parks? It could be out loud, it could be in your head, you can write it down. You might have said that you remember Rosa Parks has something to do with the bus boycott. You might have said, I think she has something to do with civil rights maybe something about segregation. Whatever it is that you saw in your head, keep that in mind as we read the story. These are a few real life photographs taken of Rosa Parks. So now it's time for us to read the story of Rosa Parks. At various times, I might stop and we'll check in for our understanding. You'll have an opportunity to do that turn and talk we discussed and we'll check in periodically. Rosa Parks was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February 4th 1913. Her mother, Leona Edwards McCauley, was a school teacher. Rosa's father, James McCauley, was a carpenter and house builder. Rosa was the great granddaughter of slaves. Soon after Rosa was born, her family moved to Pine Level, Alabama. They lived on Rosa's grandparents' small farm where there were cows, chickens, fruit, and tree nuts. In 1915, when Rosa was two years old, her brother Sylvester was born. Soon after that, her father left. He moved around to find work. While Rosa was growing up, she hardly saw him. 
As Rosa grew older, she worked on her grandparents' farm and in the nearby cotton fields. In the spring, she cleared weeds away. In the fall, she picked cotton. When Rosa was young, discrimination against African Americans was common. And discrimination can mean an unfair treatment. Most of the time, this unfair treatment was extremely harsh. There were Jim Crow laws that kept black people and white people segregated or separated. They were kept, they were kept apart on streetcars and trains, at parks and drinking fountains, in churches, hotels, theaters, and restaurants. Even the United States Army was segregated. While Rosa lived in Pine Level, the Ku Klux Klan, a band of hate-filled whites, was active there. They wore white robes and covered their faces with pointed hoods. In southern cities and elsewhere in the United States, members of the Klan marched and helped elect political candidates who shared their hatred of African Americans, Roman Catholics, Jews, and foreigners. They burned crosses and beat, tortured, and killed many African Americans. Rosa's grandfather, Sylvester Edwards, carried a shotgun to protect his family from the Klan. Now it's time for our first turn and talk. What is most important to understand or remember about the part you just heard? You can think it first in your head and share with your partner. Rosa's mother taught Rosa to read. Then, when Rosa was six years old, she started first grade in an old one-room school for African-American children. The school was open just five months a year. The new brick school building for white children was open nine months a year. School for Black children in Pine Level stopped after sixth grade. So, in 1924, Rosa continued her studies in Montgomery, Alabama. She had to leave school in 1929 because of family illness. She took care of her sick, took care of her sick grandmother and then she cared for her mother who was sick too. Rosa finished high school in 1933. In 1931, Rosa met Raymond Parks, a barber and a man active in the struggle for the rights of African Americans. Rosa was proud that he spoke up for what was right. Rosa and Raymond were married in December 1932 in her parent in her mother's home in Pine Level. In the early 1940s, Rosa joined the NAACP the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, an organization that worked to end the unfair treatment of African Americans and others. Raymond Parks had been a member for many years. Soon after Rosa joined, she was elected secretary of the Montgomery branch of the association. Buses in Montgomery were a daily reminder that the city was segregated. African Americans were allowed only to sit in the back. On some buses, they entered through the front door, paid the fare, and were told to leave the bus and go in again through the back door. Sometimes before they could get on again, the driver drove away. One day in 1943, Rosa got on the front of a crowded bus and paid the fare. The driver, James Blake, told her to get off and use the back door. Rosa told him she was already on the bus. She didn't see the need to get off. And besides that, she didn't think she could enter through the back door. It was blocked by the many people standing there, but Rosa got off. She did not get on again. She waited for the next bus. Twelve years later, on Thursday, December 1st, 1955, Rosa met James Blake again. Rosa was coming home from her work as a tailor's assistant at a Montgomery department store. She got on the Cleveland Avenue bus and took a seat in the middle section. African Americans were allowed to sit in the back and in the middle section, too, as long as no white passenger was left standing. At the next stop, some white passengers got on and because the bus was crowded, moved to the middle section where Rosa was sitting. The driver told the four African-American passengers in Rosa's row to get up. Three of them did, but not Rosa Parks. She had paid the same fare as the white passengers. She knew it was the law in Montgomery that she give up her seat, but she also knew the law was unfair. James Blake called the police and Rosa Parks was arrested. On Monday, December 5th, Rosa went to the local court and was found guilty of breaking the segregation law. She was fined $10 plus court costs. Rosa and her lawyers appealed to a higher court. That means they said to, there's various levels of court, but they basically said, we don't think it's fair, so we're gonna go to the next level of court and state our case. Beginning on December 5th, to protest the, the arrest of Rosa Parks, 
African Americans in Montgomery refused to ride on public buses. They found other ways to get to work. Many walked, sometimes as far as 12 miles. Here's the opportunity for another turn and talk. Think it in your head. What is most important to understand or remember about the part you just heard? Please share with your partner. The bus boycott was led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the new minister at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. On Monday evening, December 5th, he spoke to a large crowd. He explained the reason for the boycott. There comes a time, he said, that people get tired. We are here this evening to say to those who have mistreated us so long that we are tired. Tired of being segregated and humiliated. Tired of being kicked about by the brutal feet of oppression. The boycott lasted more than a year. During that time, almost no African Americans rode a public bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Rosa Parks, Dr. King, and many others were arrested. Homes of boycott leaders were bombed. On November 13, 1956, the United States Supreme Court ruled that segregation on public buses was against the law. On December 21st, after the court order reached Montgomery, the boycott ended. News reporters came to talk to Rosa and to photograph her sitting on a bus again. For some people, the civil rights movement in the United States, the fight for the rights of all people to be treated as equals, began with the arrest of Rosa Parks. For many others, it began one year earlier. In May 1954, the Supreme Court had ruled that separate schools for blacks and whites were unequal and against the law. But while schools and buses in the United States could no longer be segregated, there was still much discrimination against African Americans. Rosa Parks went to many demonstrations and civil rights. Rosa Parks received threatening telephone calls. Her family worried about her safety. In 1957, Rosa and Raymond Parks left Montgomery with Rosa's mother and moved to Detroit, Michigan, where Rosa's brother Sylvester lived. In 1965, Rosa began working in the Detroit office of John Conyers, a member of the United States House of Representatives. She did a lot of good work in that office, including helping poor people find homes. She retired in 1988. The late 1970s were difficult years for Rosa Parks. In 1977, after a long illness, her husband died. Her brother died a short while later, and in 1979, Rosa's mother died too. In 1987, Rosa founded the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development to give young people hope and to help them complete their education. Rosa Parks has been called the mother of the civil rights movement. The movement brought many need, needed changes in the United States. It is now against the law for Americans to discriminate against people because of their race, color, religion, or nationality at work or in restaurants, hotels, and other public places. The right of every citizen to vote is protected. Rosa Parks has received many honors, among them the Springard Medal, the Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent Peace Prize, the Eleanor Roosevelt Woman of Courage Award, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Cleveland Avenue in Montgomery was renamed Rosa Parks Boulevard. But perhaps the greatest reward for Rosa Parks is seeing people of all races on buses and in public schools and other places being treated fairly and with the respect all people deserve. And I would just like to add on to that and say that the work of making sure that all people regardless of race are being treated and respected the same is something that we're still working on right now it's not done the work of civil rights is not done right now and so it's something that i think we need to just be aware of um, reading this story that there's been a lot accomplished and still a lot to continue to be accomplished and now for our last turn and talk same question what is most important to understand or remember about the part you just heard? Think it in your head first, share with a partner. And now for our last discussion question of this lesson. What are some of the important ideas you heard in this book? Why do those ideas seem important? So this right here is a way for you to support your thinking, your opinion, with some examples from the text. 
So we're going to use this um, sentence starter, the stem right here. The reason I think this is important is because, or however you want to word it at the end. So the question is, what are some of the important ideas you heard in this book? You will say, an important idea I heard in this book was, I think this is important because, okay? Let's give you a little bit of time to think about that in your head. Share it with a partner. You can write it down. You might have said, Rosa Parks did not give up her Sienna bus to a white man. They arrested her and went, she went to jail. The reason I think that this is important is because that's what started everything. You also might have thought the black leaders organized a bus boycott. The reason I think that's important is that that's what helped to get the laws changed. You also might have said something like, I think Rosa was brave. The reason I think that this, this is the reason I think that is because she wasn't afraid to get arrested. Now it's time for IDR. As you read your story, think about important ideas in your text and supporting details. I'm reading the story Front Desk by Kelly Yang, which was a Global Reading Challenge book this year. If you participate in Global Reading Challenge, if you're still interested, you still may read the books that are a part of the Global Reading Challenge book. So I'm going to read for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to stop and ask myself that question. What is something that is important to think about or to remember in the part that I read? And why do I think that that is important?